Well, we, we woke up at 7 a.m. Uh, everyone had to have breakfast. We had to be here at 8 a.m. sharp, which meant we were all here about 7.40, setting up the clinic, getting ready. Uh, docs kind of calming everyone down. Uh, for the rest of the group, it's their first time here, so everyone's a little anxious and nervous. And they've just completed their first year in medical school. And looking back, when I was in their shoes, I was nervous too. So it's always fun to see how they're growing, even within four hours, where they're taking patients or zipping people around. We try to see 150 patients a day, and after that, we see any overflow. But people will come and they'll stand out there for eight hours, 10 hours. Some will stay overnight, waiting to hopefully be seen the next day. And that's the hardest part, is making sure that we see them all. I let them observe as much as possible and learn as much on their own, but where there are important differences in the system and, and in the delivery of health care that they may not yet know, I certainly intervene um, and bring that to their attention. Depending upon where you go, they don't have access to medicine, and it's different than access to medicine in the United States. Um, a lot of times the access to medicine in the United States is because people can't afford it, and it's still like that in international places, but it's also because there's not enough doctors to take care of people there, or they just don't exist. Um, so it's good to get out to those places where they don't exist, and people can be seen at least you know once a year or a few times a year, or missions go there multiple times a year. It's been crazy, but it's been so much fun, and I've learned so much already, and it's only been a day and a half. People are always anxious to get in, and that is the toughest part that we face, is um, we give out tickets, we work with the Rotarian groups that do radio and also uh, TV to get out to the local groups and to find people in need. And we had people that would come from even eight hours away, hop on buses that took five hours, this kid that was under 10 years old that hopped on a bus by himself for five hours to get here. So we try not to turn those people away. I had a little seven-year-old yesterday who lived um, eight hours from here. He came with his dad, and he came in with a pulse ox of 55, which means that he is pretty severely hypoxic. He's not getting enough oxygen, and it's not just from being at altitude because he lives here. So he actually has a congenital heart defect, and in the United States, it would have been repaired many, many years ago. Um, it's something that he might eventually die from, but right now we got him... Um, we did an ultrasound on his heart to make sure it was working properly. We got him sent into town to have a referral for cardiology. And um, hopefully he can get checked out while he's here because it's pretty severe. But he's a sick little boy. Trace base is healthy. No dolor, no febre, no necessitas. Entiendo? Crazy because there's so many patients and there's just people everywhere running all the time. Pico mucho? Sí, pico mucho. Uh-huh. I heard about the trip from an older student and it just sounded amazing. I've always wanted to do mission work. I have a little background in Spanish, so it sounded like the perfect opportunity. I've seen this have significant changes in, in, my, in my students. Uh, I've been doing it uh, for now 12 years, uh, only three here in, in this area, Peru. But over the uh, past 12 years, I have seen uh, students have sig sig make significant career choices to go into primary care, uh, to seek a, a, a career in, 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 in providing health care services abroad. I think for, for me personally, I really want to do international work when I become a doctor. So to me, it's really important to understand how to how to communicate with the population and what their needs are. They want Citriac. Yeah, we don't have Ceftriaxone here, but what we do have yes. is we have norfloxacin. Nor and so. it's also it's frustrating at times because you want to be able to give them the best medical care you can. And there have already been some times where I've heard doctors say, well, in the States we do this, but we don't have it here. Students frequently ask, well, how can I do this? I don't have an X-ray machine. And I tell them to use their senses, you know, their, their sight, their, their touch. Um, and by the time we leave here, they'll realize that you don't necessarily need an X-ray to diagnose a condition and certain conditions and whatnot. And they have a lot more uh, knowledge and training that you don't always have to rely on the most uh, up-to-date uh, tests, most expensive tests, because clearly in Trujillo and in Huamachuco, uh, where we don't even have x-rays, we won't get that. But at least we have something and we're doing, we're, we're helping in some small way and that's what matters to me. It makes me definitely want to do more international. It's a great experience. When I first started doing missions, uh, my daughter was 16 
and it was a great experience for her. She thought at that point she wanted to go into medicine, so I wanted to bring her out so she could see what the real world was like, uh, not what we have in the state. Sometimes it's a little bit protected. I think it's important because, one, well, Americans have to realize how spoiled they are. And then also it's really important to see, you see tons of different diseases, and it's really important, I think, to help populations that might not have the resources that we have the time and the money to provide for them. I think it's really important to reach out that way.